Today we're going to talk about being semantically pure. That is not to be a strict grammarian, but just when you come to see me and you use a certain language to describe what's going on with your face, I would like to sort of sort of direct you in the right direction and talk to you about how to really see these things. So I'm going to give you the lexicon, the way to actually describe to me what you see when you come to see me. Right now I'm going to give you the basic vocabularies and don't worry if you make a mistake when you come. I'm probably going to correct you and sort of steer you the way they want, to, want, want you to go. What does all this mean? Sounds very abstract. Let's talk about the first comment, which is the idea that there's filling versus lifting. A lot of people are so programmed to what I call the two finger rule, rule which is, hey doc, I, I need this. Just a little here. Can't you see that this makes this look better? And the idea of that being a lifting maneuver, in my opinion, oftentimes is missing the boat because you know that what I do is fill. Very hard to describe this to you. Why would I want to fill something that looks heavy or I have an eye bag, you're going to fill that more? It doesn't make sense. If my jawline's heavy, you're going to fill it to make it look lighter? It's very hard for you to conceptualize that comment, but lifting and filling are separate. Then a lot of people say, well, when you fill it, is it going to lift? No. It most likely will not lift, it, but the idea is that it, you don't need to lift to begin with in most cases. And it's hard for me to convince you of that until you come and look at my photos and begin to sort of walk you through the concept of why lifting oftentimes is what we think we need but we don't need. And the only way you're going to really understand that is sitting down with me for 10 to 15 minutes and going through a didactic of explaining why one thing is the other. The other thing that's really important is sort of uh, teaching you to, to think about negative versus positive space. The idea is oftentimes when we look at something, we see an eyelid hanging and we think that's got to be cut. It's, that's looking at positive space. But oftentimes what I want to have you see is negative space. Um, in the graphic you're seeing here in this African American woman, when you look at the upper eyelid in particular, what you're looking at here is the fact that there is this eyelid sagging. She's got this extra skin, the fat is sitting there. And actually it's not. If you look at the rim of bone that's exposed, that is simply negative space in its fullest expression, which is bone exposure, and softening that transition zone, we had a video about that, will allow me to create a result without the need for lifting. If you look very carefully, there is no lifting, even though it looks lifted. So I want to sort of go through these terms because oftentimes the words that you will use is, I've got something hanging, I've got to lift it, this has got to be pulled, and it oftentimes is not the right answer for you if you begin to understand truly the qualities of what needs to be done. And in this graphic you see here, what you're seeing is that this woman here, 50 some years old, actually looks like she's got a very low brow. It looks like it needs to be lifted, physically brought upward. But what I'm showing you again, once again, is that it's actually brought lower. And it's very hard to conceptualize why that is when you look at the before photograph until you see the after and you actually measure where the brow position is, you can see it's actually lowered. And that's a very, very different idea. So hopefully this is beginning to make more sense for you. This graphic here that you're looking at is this is about a 41-year-old lady that's a couple of years out from fat transfer. And all these photos are at least a year out from fat grafting. Uh, this lady here has actually had her brows lifted and it looks still heavy for you. And what I want to show you in this graphic is that it looks like it still needs to be lifted, but actually was filled and was actually brought lower down. So you can see in these three examples that lifting, which may be what you think the person needs, and they're all three different eyelids, all of them have actually only been filled and not lifted or cut.